Question of the day. What is your favorite point salad game? If you say point salad, you get extra points salad. But no, point salad a Euro game, a game in which you're doing all sorts of different things to collect points. Because today we're taking a look at Boon Lake from Alexander Pfister and DLP Games. This is a game all about settling the community of Boon Lake. It's got some interesting futuristic themes and some art that looks like Altiplano and that sort of style. So it's a really interesting looking game. The board looks like classic Euro, which I love. So let's take a look right now at how to play Boon Lake. We'll come back up, talk final thoughts right now. So this is Boon Lake set up for two players. There are three main areas, four main elements of the game that you're going to need to pay attention to. The main board, the action selection board, and then your personal player board. We'll look at each of these in turn. Let's start with the action selection board so that I can kind of make sense of what those actions are. The last element are cards. Everyone will start with six cards in their setup. And then you're going to set up the board based on player count. Certain tiles will automatically populate the board. On these tiles are things like building sites which is where you're going to put your inhabitants out there onto the building sites taking the benefits shown we'll talk about that in just a minute but first let's take a look at the action selection board this is the main impetus this is what drives the game over here on the side are how many spaces your boat will move down river after you've taken your action that is based on this river here which when you land on spaces you're going to get the bonuses shown when you take an action you're going to pull it out of the double-sided or the two layered player board, which I love. You're gonna do the action, and then much like Puerto Rico and Twilight Imperium, there are follow-on actions where the other players can take the actions. In one case, you can also take the secondary actions, but the, uh, I'm sorry, in every case, you can take the secondary actions except one in which only the other players can take it. But this one, for instance, this is regional scoring. Essentially, you're gonna look at this tile and follow it from left to right. You'll follow them all from left to right. Typically, they'll say play a type of card. There are three types of cards. There's the sunset, the nighttime, and the midday. These cards will be allowed to be played based on your paying for them out of the hand. So this one costs five coins. This one costs eight coins plus those resources in a vase. I'll show you how to get those in just a minute. Here, you're going to do the card, play it down, or you can discard a card of that type for two coins. Then this action allows you to do a regional scoring. Technically, it should be called like an income or something because it's not so much scoring because you're getting money per inhabitant of any type that you have out there, not just the people, but the buildings and cattle as well. So you're going to choose one of these bonuses to take and cover up. So that's three points. This is three cards, four coins, three coins. Once you've covered it, you'll then score the other areas for money. So essentially, that's what that one is. Once you've done that, you'll... Move the amount of spaces your boat down the river. So ours would be one, two, three. So we would take our boat from the top. One, two, three. Take the bonus that we land in. So, but you can move up to that. So we'll take a coin for that. Then these will slide up. If you were to take these bottom actions here, they're going to cost you negative points to do them. Now let's look at the rest of the stuff on the main board first, just to get an idea. Your income tracks are right here. This is your card income track. And up there above it is your coin income track. During the intermittent scoring phases, the interim scoring phases, you're going to collect those resources and those or that money and those cards. Those scoring phases will happen when someone passes this dam the first time, and then this one, and then this one again, and then lastly here. So there's four interim scoring phases and one final scoring phase. On the board, some of the actions are going to allow you to put exploration tiles out on the board. When you cover something up, you take the benefit listed below it. So for instance, if I were to place this one out, I would gain two coins. This one, I would take one of my inhabitant people from the supply and add it to my personal supply on my game board in my ranch. This one would be gained coins. This symbol here is the most unique. This is part of the resource sites or the, yeah, resource sites. These are in your game over here on your player board. And we'll go ahead and cut to that right now. On your player board, you've got these four production sites. You're going to pick one to choose at the beginning of the game to produce. Now, these are not resources that you can actually see. They're more abstract. So, for instance, I produce one blue uh, resource right now. However, if I were to move my boats here, I've got these two canoes. If I were to move my two canoes downstream to be on this one and this one, you produce whatever your boat is below as well as your production site. So, I would now produce one rock and two 
of these blue ones. So if any of the cards called for that, I could then uh, pay those to use those cards. A couple of other things on the player board, you've got your spaces for your houses and your inhabitants. These are double-sided and your cattle. When these things are emptied, you're gonna get points during the scoring phases, which is nice. So you're gonna try to get these off the board here. Now, the actions are, that are in the game, I'm not gonna go over the action tile, but I'm gonna go over the different actions that there are. There would be things like here, this is gain a new person from the supply into your ranch. You're gonna need those to spend. This one's do that exploration tile, so you'll put one of these out and get the bonus. This symbol is gain or pay the cards. If the number is in black, you pay it. If it's in white, you gain it typically. And then the other players can all gain workers there. This is a lever action or lever action, depending on where you're from. And then basically what's gonna happen is you can pay the cost associated with these levers, put one on it, and at any point, you can choose to take the benefit listed. So for instance, this one is move upstream with your canoes, or these, for free. Normally it's two coins per boat to move them back upstream. You can always move them downstream for free. You would flick this to show that you've done it, and then during the interim scoring, you would unflick that. This is develop with the down arrow and upgrade for the up arrow. Rarely are they separated except one place on the intermittent scoring action. But here, develop means you would take one of your people from your ranch and put it out onto the board onto a building site. Boom, I've done that, I would gain the benefit. Upgrade means that you would follow the rules listed here on the player board for upgrading. You can upgrade a person into a house by switching this one out, putting this in your supply, and then spending one off your ranch to put a house down on that spot instead. If you were to do that with the house to the next phase, you would need to spend two of them to move to a settlement here. The only rule is there has to be three things buildings, inhabitants, whatever you want to call them, three wooden pieces, they don't have to be yours, touching that space. So in order to have this house turn into settlement, this space, this space, this space, or this space, three of those would have to have buildings on them. Lastly, putting cattle out. First, you're going to put out one of these spaces out, and then you're allowed to put cattle out there. You would still take the bonus. Cattle works like this. For the If there are zero cattle on a space, it costs you one of your ranchers. If there's one cattle, it costs you two and so far, and then you're gonna put your cattle out there. These will reveal bonuses as well as cattle will score based on settlements near them. Those are the main actions of the player board here, other than playing cards and gaining benefits. So mostly what you're gonna be doing is trying to get benefits to get those points up. The last but not least on the, on the main board here are these scoring tiles. Now they serve two purposes. The top one is you can build them like a building. So for instance, this is 12 coins, three stone and two blue. Don't have a clue what the blue is. It's probably in there, but we'll just go with blue for now. Then you get the benefit. You would gain two from your supply, seven points, and then you would move up on your income of the gold track. This bottom part here is in the interim scoring. You're going to have to choose which of these scoring mechanisms you're going to score four points for, three points, two points, and one point. However, if it's the one of your color, so for instance, the green player would place here, you would double the points. Same goes for the top. So if the green player went here, they would get 14 points, not just four, uh, seven. Down here, if I put my four here, this would mean that I would get, uh, if I'm the green player, I would get double the points as well. So I would get eight points if I'm the green player going here, if I meet this. Now these are all different and they're gonna play different each time. There are some that we didn't use that are gonna change the scoring up, but essentially they're mid-game scoring for you must meet this threshold at the first, second, third, and fourth interim scoring. Final thing you're gonna score are cards themselves. They have point values in the bottom right, as well as some of them have in-game and permanent bonuses. So that's how you play Boone Lake. You're gonna take those actions, you're gonna follow on those actions, and you're gonna boost until you have the most points. Person with the most points obviously wins the game. So that's how you play Boon Lake. First and foremost, let's talk about the way the game looks and we'll morph that to art direction into gameplay. That's kind of the flow we typically do here. Art looks great, the game looks good. The board itself looks like a classic kind of mid 2010s Euro on purpose. Like it's a very distinctive style and I really appreciate that. The cards themselves have really interesting art. My only question is, I almost feel like this was clearly going to be a settling the Old West theme, and just at the last minute had just a tweak on it to where it's more 
nebulous than that. Now, I could be wrong, but it feels that way. And I almost think I would have preferred it if it was more of a let's settle the Old West versus kind of this mystical, not really mystical, but this other place, right? Where you that blue resource and you've got rubies instead of like bricks or whatever. I don't know. That to me just I thought was a little strange. However, the art on the cards looks great. All the buildings look good. The fact that there's the morning, the midday, and the nighttime cards of the same building sometimes, that looks great. Statue comes to mind. There are Easter eggs to other games like the Llama from Altiplano is in there. So little things like that I like. Now as far as art direction, the symbols in the game are specific. There are a lot of different symbols and a lot of them use the same imagery and maybe the color of the number on it or the color of the arrow or the direction of the arrow depends. That changes what the action is. So for instance, when you develop a place, you have the character being put down or the green arrow up means to upgrade. So it makes sense once you start playing, but teaching new people all those different things is a little tricky at first. However, it does make sense. Now, what I do like is all of the scoring elements are on the board. So you can see how to do the interim scoring, how to do final scoring, what you need to build a building. As far as art direction, I also like that you're not using resources. This one's kind of interesting because at first I was like, well, how is this going to work? It's almost like Seven Wonders that the resources you have are abstract. So for instance, you don't actually produce the rubies or the blue, I'm not sure what those are, recycle trash, I don't know what they are, but you don't produce those. You just have them available to you on your turn based on what your production sites are and based on where your boats are. To me, I thought that was a cool change instead of just collecting a bunch of resources and spending them. The only thing you collect and spend would be money and vases or vases as the fancy people say. But all in all, the art direction of the game works because everything seems to flow pretty well and you understand. That being said, I also like the actual action selection tiles themselves. The whole take an action selection tile out, do the actions, they can follow along like Twilight Imperium, and then sliding it up and moving your boat. To me, I think the game works just how smoothly all of the, the elements of a turn work. So on your turn, you're going to take the action other people can follow along, then you're gonna move the boats. I think that is a really cool mechanic because it allows you to do quite a lot of things. You can potentially use your boat to get the thing you really needed to do on your turn that you couldn't quite accomplish, or vice versa. So to me, I like that. The four scorings are pretty easy to comprehend and understand. I like emptying your board out, upgrading the houses, putting the settlements out. All of it really just makes sense. All in all, Boon Lake is a very, very good Euro point salad game. If you like Fister's other works, Maracaibo and uh, Great Western Trail, this is, weight-wise, it's about the exact same as Great Western Trail, maybe even a little lighter uh, and lighter than Maracaibo, but, they're, but it's very, very good in which you can change your strategy up to figure out what you need to score, especially based on which of those tiles you put down. So, end of the day, the game looks really great. It's just got a good classic-looking Euro style. It plays very smartly. It makes sense what it does. And there are a lot of ways to score points. All in all, end of the day, go pick up Boon Lake. You won't be disappointed. I'm Brian Drake here on the Dice Tower. Make sure to follow us on Twitter, Instagram, etc. Dice Tower Brian. Until next time, we'll see you.